I'll bring in some things that, that we've been talking on Tuesday evening, but really sometimes the, the, the blessing of being able to be on Tuesday evening is to kind of be what you're feeling. And so I'm kind of feeling this. So if you turn with me tonight to the book of 1 Samuel, uh, chapter number 14. I'm going to be looking at a few things. Um, want to just encourage us tonight. Amen. And the Lord. Uh, I think that's that's the ministry God has called us to is a ministry of encouragement. Amen. So the Bible says, Now it came to pass upon a day that Jonathan, the son of Saul, said unto the young men uh, who bore his armor, Come and let us go over to the Philistines' garrison that is on the other side. Uh, but he told not his father. Amen. He told not his father. He's using some wisdom. Previously, we see that lack of wisdom was 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 uh, transpiring, particularly when you look at Saul and his life, uh, Jonathan's dad. But now we catch up with Jonathan, and he's exercising some godly wisdom, and uh, uh, he displays that his strength is not found with anything that is carnal, anything that is fleshly, but his strength completely is found in God alone. Now we've heard in all our lives probably, or at least all of our spiritual lives, that when we're down to nothing and we all we have is God, we find that God is all that we'll need. And so here it is, Jonathan, he could have relied on other sources, but he did not. Uh, he didn't have much, save a sword that was beside his side. Uh, his armor bearer was there, but did not have anything. And so he, he exercises complete wisdom of God and complete strength in God. Our strength is found in God alone tonight. And brother David, so it was on Sunday morning, you know, his strength is perfect. And uh, reflecting on what Paul said, he said, uh, 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 thy great, the Lord speaking to Paul, he said, My grace is sufficient for thee, for in your weakness my strength is made perfect. And so the strength of God is all that we need tonight. Uh, our, our, we, may, we may in our carnal mind think that, that, that we need certain uh, outlets of things or certain carnal things or material things, but, but it, it, when it comes down to the bottom line, that all we need is the strength of God because God's grace is always sufficient. Whatsoever we lack in our own abilities or in our own resources, God makes up for in a surplus. And so the Bible says, "The solitary in the uttermost parts of Gibeah, under a pomegranate tree, which is in Migron. And the Bible says there was with him about 600 men. And uh, jumping down to verse number four, the Bible says uh, that, that here is Jonathan. Uh, he leaves, and so no one knows that he's gone. The Bible says, and between the passages uh, by which Jonathan sought to get over uh, to the Philistines' garrison, there was a sharp rock on one side and a sharp rock on the other side. And, 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 and have you ever felt that way before? That, that, that you have a mountain to climb and there's a sharp rock on either side and all you have before you is a mountain to climb. You ever felt that way before? I mean, really, here is Jonathan, and he is in the minority. Uh, he has a, a mountain to climb. Uh, uh, he has sharp objects on both sides. But once again, I, I want to remind us that when life is like that, spiritually speaking to us, we find that God majors in the minors. When those things are stacked against us, God likes to take those odds and work for us. I believe He does that because He wants us to see that it's not in our own strength or our own ability. It's not in the arm of flesh, but it's in His Spirit and His power that wins the battle. And the Bible says, uh, let me jump down to verse number 6. And Jonathan said to the young man who bore his armor, Come and let us go over unto the garrison of the uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us, for there is no restraint to the Lord to save 
uh, by many or by few. Now, now, when Jonathan said this, it may be, it wasn't that he was lacking uh, faith. He, he had great faith. He knew that God could do it. Uh, he wasn't setting out to, uh, uh, to be uh, assassinated. He wasn't setting out on a, a suicide mission. But he was setting out with the expectation that God was going to work for him. And so here faith begins to blossom and it begins to bloom and it begins to do it all right in front of the enemy. How awesome is that? How is it that when God begins to blossom and bloom our faith, He does it right in front of the enemy? Amen. God wants to work. God can save by many or God can save by few. So wherever we are in our spiritual walk and the fight that we're fighting, the good fight of faith, amen, maybe you feel like you have lots of people with you. It's good. I know that there's strength in numbers and, and there's safety and godly counsel. There's lots of good things. However, there may be times in our life where God removes everything that is a support to us and everything that may take away our, our, our reliance and thinking that we have the upper hand to show us that even when the, uh, the odds are stacked against us, that He is still working for us and we have to have faith. Even when we're a few, even when we don't have a, but one sword, even when there's objects on the side, even when there's a great big army ahead of you. I mean, really, there were 30,000 iron chariots, there were 6,000 mounted cavalry, and there were an army as numerous as the sands of the seashore that were oppressing Israel. And here was two men. How would you like to take on that? In the physical, I wouldn't. But Jonathan knew that he was not operating in the same realm that his dad was operating in. Once again, it comes down to a life of sanctification. It comes down to a life of not living in carnality, but a life of living by faith. What is it like to live by faith when all the odds are stacked against us but yet we have this complete confidence in God that God is going to work. Amen? It works. I don't know what the odds could be that are stacked against us because they can be different for different people at different times in life. But it doesn't matter what the odds are stacked against you when we bring God into the equation. How many have ever, ever said, God, I see what the odds are stacked against me, but I'm trusting you with this. How many have ever seen God move? You don't have to tell me about the stories if you don't want to. You, you see it happen? I've seen it happen. And here was Jonathan. He was operating in a different realm. He didn't even consult his daddy because daddy was working in a different realm. Do you know sometimes it's best not to consult people who aren't working in the same spiritual realm and the realm of faith that you're working in? Because Jonathan knew that if he would tell his dad or he would go talk to anybody else, he knew that they would advise and fight against it. They, John, uh, it, it may be that Jonathan's armor bearer didn't have everything that Jonathan had. And maybe Saul would like to try to put on some un, 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 unskilled or some unproven armor upon this armor bearer. He did that. He tried that before. Remember that with a young boy named David. And David said, "No, I've not proven this, but what I've proven is faith in God." And that's what realm I walk in. And so here it is that that, that Jonathan doesn't consult with that. And so the Bible says in verse number 7, And the armor bearer said unto him, Do all that is in your heart, turn ye. Behold, I am with you according to your heart. Do you know what the best thing that we can do when we are fighting spiritual battles and they are big and they are unknown and we don't know completely the end result, but we're trusting God is to align ourselves with other believers that says, I am with you. Let your heart follow the will and the plan of God. I will be for you. I will travel with you. I will be by your side. I will defend you. I will work until I see God work and move in your life. 
Sometimes you can't discuss it with everybody else because they don't understand. And they may be some close people to you. Jonathan's daddy, but daddy didn't understand because he wasn't operating in the same room. But the armor bearer was. Aligning ourselves with the people of God. Once again, thank you for your faithfulness to church because you know what you're doing? You're aligning yourself with the people of God that when the battle is in array and there's sharp objects on both sides and there's nothing but a mountain in front of you, you've aligned yourself with folks that say, you can do it. You can make it. God is for you and we're with you in this battle. It's a great thing. The Bible says that Jonathan said, Behold, we will press over unto these men and we will discover ourselves unto them or we will reveal ourselves unto them uh, and, and so here it is uh, 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 that, that, that God is about to to reveal who he is in them to the the Philistines not only is it going to be them but they're going to see God at work too isn't it great when God is revealed in, in you even in the battle you're facing even against the enemy the Bible goes on down to say, If they say unto us, Tarry until we come down to you, then we will stand in our place, and we will not go up unto them. But if they say thus, Come on up uh, uh, unto us, and, and then we will go up, for the Lord has delivered them into our hands, and this shall be a sign unto us. So he says, If we fight them in the battle, or in the valley, so be it. Wow, here they are, sharp objects on both sides, fighting a, a, an enemy that's coming down, and they're fighting against gravity. But it doesn't matter. They will fight the battle wherever because they're trusting the Lord. You may say, God, I'm not really aligned, and I'm not really uh, armored, and I'm not really ready for this battle. It may not be the place you want to battle in, but you have to trust God for it. Amen. But if they say, come up, the, 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 then we know that they're going to be delivered into our hands. Uh, it, it's faith. It's, it, it, it's not just presumption, but it's knowing that God has, has worked in the middle of the difficulty. And so here it is. Uh, they're trusting God. The Bible says, And both of them discovered themselves unto the garrison, or revealed themselves unto the garrison of the Philistines. And the Philistines said, Behold, the Hebrews come forth out of the holes. Where did I, where Themselves. And so they look and, they, and what some may presume is seeing too, they look down and they see more because there is definitely a third person that is with them, the same one that showed up in the fiery furnace. He reveals himself and the Philistines are fearful. Amen. When God begins to reveal himself. When God begins to reveal himself. Amen. You can trust that he is going to fight the battle. The Bible says, and both of them discover, jumping on down already, read the verse. And the men of the garrison answered Jonathan and his armor bearer and said, Come up unto us, and we will show you a thing. And Jonathan said unto his armor bearer, Come up after me, for the Lord hath delivered them into our hands. Amen. A Jonathan, amen. Come up after me. God's given us the victory. How many of you believe that we can walk into the victory? Yes. Amen. So here it is, Jonathan's discovering the victory. And Jonathan climbed up upon his hands and upon his feet and his armor bearer after him. And they fell before Jonathan and his armor bearer slew after him. Here it is. That, can you imagine? Here are these Philistines, mighty in number. And, and here comes Jonathan and he's climbing on his hands and knees. I'm not sure how you would feel, but, but, but there he is on his hands and knees, and he's climbing up. And, 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 and let's be honest, it looks like the odds are stacked against him. I mean, tired from climbing the mountain, you're on your hands and your knees. How, how, how alert are you to, to pull out your sword? And, I mean, they definitely have the upper hand. But not with God. Not with God. Tonight, do you know? It may look like the enemy has the upper hand, but the battle is not ours. The battle is not ours. 
And David and his armor bearer slays the Philistines. It was God. It was God. God orchestrated the victory. I believe that we have to have faith tonight in the mountain that we're climbing, in the enemy that we're fighting, knowing that we can conquer and have victory because God's in charge of that. The battle is not ours. The Bible says, and that first slaughter, which Jonathan and his army made, was about 20 men, two against 20, with it as it were a half acre of land, which a yoke of oxen might plow. And if you study that a little bit more, it's what a, a yoke of oxen might plow within a day. Here it is that it was really a half acre. And some may look at that and say, man, that's, that's a terrible half acre. That's a vicious half acre. That's, if you would tonight, hell's half acre. It can feel like we're fighting all the enemies of hell. But when God is in the battle, hell's half acre can be taken for the kingdom of God. You may say, Brother Seville, it's my life. Well, your half acre is worth taking for the kingdom of God. Amen. Climb the mountain. If there's sharp objects on either side, amen, don't allow them to detour you. Don't allow them to distract you. Don't allow them to overcome you. Amen, know that you are not in the battle alone. You have the support of brothers and sisters in the Lord, just like you testified tonight, Sister Linda. This is the family of God. We are in things together. There is nothing, and we may not always be able to reveal all the contents of our hearts. We don't do that to just everybody. And there's still times where we keep things in our hearts between us and God. But regardless, we can share that we have things upon our hearts and our brothers and our sisters can go to war on their knees for us and God can give us the victory. The Bible says, And there was trembling in the host, in the field, and among the people, the garrison, and the spoilers, and they also trembled. And the earth quaked, so it was a very great trembling. Amen. Here is faith. Amen. Faith that shakes the earth. Amen. Do you believe that you can have faith tonight in the power of God that can rock this world and can rock the enemy's world and send him to flight and make him tremble? Amen. Whether it's for our spiritual needs, whether it's for our physical, emotional needs, whether it's for our family, whether it's for territory that the enemy tells us that we can never have, that he has a stronghold on, and we can't take back. We can take it by faith. Amen. And faith can make the enemy's territory begin to tremble and put them away. Amen. And so the Bible says in the watchman of Saul and Gideon of uh, uh, Benjamin, look, and, and behold, the multitude melted away, and they went on, uh, on beating down one another. And Saul, uh, said, then said Saul to the people who were with a number, and see who is God. And they numbered, and guess who they saw was God? Jonathan and his armor bearer, they're gone. So here it is. At the very moment that God is giving a tremendous blessing to Israel with the defeat of enemy, the flesh of Saul is trying to find out what is going on. What can be going on? How can there be blessing? What, what, what's happening? Do you know what? The flesh of the carnal person will never understand what God is doing in the man and woman of faith. Some folks can say that they're saved. But if they're still operating in the flesh, don't expect them to understand where you're operating in the Spirit. They're going to be running around in the flesh while you're reaping a victory in the Spirit. The world is not going to understand your victory. You know, a, a, a Sunday night, what, what, was, what was happening around here? Just good old-fashioned Holy Ghost uh, move. Uh, uh, Brother Eli, we can go tell the world, but they can't understand our spiritual victory because they're operating in the flesh. That's what the life of sanctification is about. 
when we learn to operate in the Spirit. <clears throat> Here was who God had called to be king, and as He called him to be king, He was doing everything His own way, His own operation. Uh, uh, Saul was just, he was about building his kingdom. It was, it, it, it was really about uh, taking uh, the majesty of God and the miracle of God and, and, and making it all about him. When here was Jonathan, he was operating in a different way. The flesh doesn't understand it. The Bible says that Saul said unto Ahiah, bring hither the ark of God. For the ark of God was at the time, was at that time with the children of Israel. Uh, Jonathan, uh, he he is seen in a couple of things. Here he is in just complete confidence. There isn't this, there isn't this hysteria, if you would. There isn't this uh, uh, nervousness. There isn't this rushing around. There is just. A just show the strength and the confidence that they have to I believe that there are many in here that you know what that's about. Just operating in the Spirit. That God has this. That we're trusting Him with the battle. We're not in a people but no matter how bad it seems like things are stacked against us, we're just operating in quietness and the strength. See, Saul was operating in the realm of unbelief. He didn't believe that it was possible that God could work such a victory against the mighty host of the Philistines. And on the contrary, Jonathan was exercising great belief. How would it operate tonight? What is the things in our spirit world that we look at? You know, Brother Craig, you're right. I mean, sometimes it's overwhelming when we look at just how crazy things are in this world. I mean, what is allowed, what's not allowed? You know, where the world is calling wrong, right, and right, wrong, and we're living in a world that seems to be upside down. But yet, for the child of God, we can operate not in this unbelief, but in a strong and quiet confidence of believing and knowing God is still in control. I've watched folks that they were facing situations of death. They were facing situations of uncertainty. One of the things that that, that strongly strike me, you know, we, we all have those folks, maybe I've probably shared this before, but I, I, I remember my mom, you know, we talked last week about personality, and we talked about how that God uses our personality, He gets in there and sanctifies us, no matter what our personality is, but God also helps us to step out of the realm of our personality and be used in gifts of the Spirit. I remember when I was in the high school, my mom was a very quiet lady. She never really said much. But she still doesn't. She's a very quiet lady. Strong. Don't, don't 
take her quietness as a weakness. She's very strong. She's very confident. She very much knows what realm she's working in. But just, just a strong. I remember one night in church, there was just some things that was happening in spirit, and there was things that was happening uh, uh, just in, in, in general uh, in, our, in our area of church and community, and the Spirit of God was moving, and all of a sudden I heard a tongue message from a voice I never heard before. Their God was just warping through my mom, through the gifts of the Spirit. That's very unlike her. She's not. She's not outgoing. She's not. She doesn't want to be seen. She's very quiet. But just wants to be there, but can support others. But their God just used her in her own. Here, Jonathan was being used in her own. It was really unlike that. That was of his family lineage. But God gave him the privilege of being there. And then I let me share this with you. I say that to move on to this. Then years later, you all are all familiar with when my brother, uh, he was being treated for all kinds of crazy things and we thought that being in the mines was affecting his lungs and he would breathe. Here he actually had blockages in his heart that was affecting his breathing and uh, it, was, it, was, it was bad. His injection fraction was down to 15-16%, which is very, very low. So they put him on a heart pump just to try to strengthen his heart and he needed to do surgery right away. And the doctor gave him that window that was slim. Uh, and I remember being in the room prior to surgery and we prayed together as a family. And I remember my mom uh, being there and holding his hand. And she was just, you know, uh, gently stroking it and, you know, affirming her love for him and her confidence in God as we were praying. And, uh, you know, it was getting time. Uh, she said, she, she picked his hand up from where she was holding it. She put it over. She laid it down his chest. And she said, okay, Philip. She said, I just want you to know that I will pray. And now I'm trusting God for you. You're not lying. You're just your case. No tears. No breaking emotion. I know on the inside she was probably tearing up. But what it is, is the quiet confidence that we can have in God. That doesn't happen overnight. You know, that comes through a life of devotion and prayer and faithfulness to God that I see before my eyes. That comes through a loss of a husband unexpectedly and just a very long, difficult road to provide for family. Very difficult. I mean, working minimum wage jobs because there was no supplemental insurance. There was no more revenue coming in. She had a lot on her plate. And as a woman of faith, she took on her responsibilities, but she also put her quiet confidence in God and continues to. Do you know what? That models to me that there is not, there's not the flesh that's allowed to rule here. My mom is not perfect in any way. But she's a woman of faith and trust God. And so that's what I see here in Jonathan. Not perfect. Has his faults. But yet, the quiet confidence in God. Completely different than the man God has called to lead. But Israel got tired of prophetic words and they wanted a lavish king. They didn't want any more theocracy, but they wanted a monarchy. And so Israel got tired and, and, and Saul kind of just fell into their hands. And though he's, he looks wonderful to the eye, on the inside, he is far from God and far from what God wants him to be. And there's no certainty, there's no quietness, there's no confidence. But here is a man who's dictated by the flesh and is haunted by his past, who's haunted by his lack of being able to have strength and, and, and the ability to lead in the way that God would want a king to lead. But his son rises up in a different position because he shows to us the strength that comes through the confidence of faith that we can have in God, that the battle is not ours. That you can sit in a pomegranate tree, Saul. You can sit there and you can build a fire and you can roast marshmallows and you can be afraid and, 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 and you can try to just take it easy and try to appease your mind uh, however you want. But, but, but nonetheless, there's a real battle. It's only going to be fought by faith. The world sits under a pomegranate tree. The world sits by the fire. The world sits by entertainment with uncertainty underneath all of it. But the child of God says, I'll quietly step away. And I will fight the battle in the spirit. 
Man, that's powerful tonight. That's powerful tonight. We look and we see a few things. And I'm going to close with this. We see the assurance that God is with us. The enemy had higher ground, but none of these things moved on. Even if it seems the enemy of where you're at and what you need has higher ground, do not be moved in your confidence in God. You see, Satan fools the saint who does not keep his mind, amen, uh, in the place that God is able. Once again, God will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon thee. Keep the peace of God in your mind by keeping Christ there, not what things look like. Don't get distracted by a large show of people. Don't get distracted or disheartened by, by, by what the enemy may have. Amen. Don't go to the sidelines with uncertainty. Don't forget uh, that, 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 that God doesn't need big to do big things. He just needs our faithfulness. The assurance that God is with us. You see, Jonathan said maybe but his maybe turned into a miracle. We need to look and say, but maybe God is trying to do this. I have confidence. Turn your maybes into miracles. Amen. I look that, that God can use us. Amen. He may use us at the beginning, but trust me, He will take over. You step out in faith. You trust Him. You let Him take over. Amen. You see, what looked like a baby crying in a basket became a deliverer. Amen. A baby in a manger became a stranger. A stone that's just laying by the brook becomes ammunition that takes down a giant. Let our babies become our miracles. Amen. The turning point is knowing that God is in our midst and for us. To so the assurance that God is with us. And then the unity that we are with God. You know, undoubtedly, the Philistines were large. However, Saul's group was much larger than Jonathan's group. You look at the odds, you break it down to the Philistines, then you break it down to Saul, he was still bigger than what Jonathan and his armor bearer was. But these two men had unity. There's unity that God is going to work and move. There is nothing, nothing that when we have unity that we cannot anticipate God doing. I love what I've heard from folks. Gretchen's mom, she said to me, she said, I'm going to ask her she said, I've only been in this church twice. She said, but I feel the love and I feel family. You know why? Because it's the unity of the Spirit. I know that the Lord said the same thing. I got, and, and John, you said the same thing. On Sunday, um, hey, Strohacker, met me up, she's going out, she said, I feel such love and unity here. She said, this is like family. You know what? If we will do that, it's not about us. It's unity in the Spirit. If we will be unified, it will allow the Spirit of God to work in you. It doesn't mean that we're perfect. It doesn't mean we don't have our differences. But what it does mean is, is that we love each other regardless. Because we love as Christ loves. So there's, there's a unity that, that, that Saul did not have. Amen. There's a unity that even the Philistines did not have with their 30,000 30, chariots and, and 6,000 mountain mount cavalry. Uh, even though there was only one weapon, still there was a greater weaponry that God had with Jonathan and his armor bearer. And that was faith in God and unity between them. 
And then I think the third thing is this. Not only our assurance in God, not only our unity, but we have to hold on for the victory. Jonathan and his armor bearer, they came to this dark canyon. Uh, the, there, was, there was towering cliffs on both sides, sharp objects. Uh, 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 Jonathan's plan was to allow the enemy to see them. It doesn't matter if the enemy sees us. What matters is if we persevere. Here he is on his hands and his knees crawling to fight the enemy, but he's persevering. We cannot give up. I wonder how many times, if we could see into the spiritual realm, how many times someone gave up one prayer away or one day too soon or, or just one more day of faith trusting in the answer. We have to persevere that God is going to work for us. What did Job say? He said, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. You know what he was saying? He said, I'm going to persevere. Even if it's death, I'm still going to trust him. We know the outcome was different. It wasn't death. But he persevered. We've got to keep on persevering. Israel's army arrived, uh, arrives. Here comes these two probably in their sight, two scrawny soldiers. But Jonathan said, we might be scrawny. We might be little to compare to you. We might be a lot less than them. But we're here for a fight. We've got to be willing to fight for the things that God has for us. The Bible says in verse number 15 that there was a very great trembling. They took over. The earth shake, shook. They started fighting against each other. God plans the victory. It's only a little piece of property, about a half an acre, a half an acre. But it was worth standing and fighting for. Fighting the fight. How does all this kind of sanctification? Once again, it's the difference between Saul and John. Operating in the flesh, they operate in the spirit. Some still think that the Christians are operating around the flesh. God's called us not to operate in frenzy and erratic. 